friends today i am going to describe the taxonomy of this plant this is an annual under shrub welcome now i am going to describe the whole plant the stem is solid quadrangular the green in color hispid hispid means it is hairy it is having hairs on the surface and it is having too much branches simple and subsessile why it is subsessile because the petiole are very short and it is narrowly a leaf is narrowly oblong and lanceolate why it is lanceolate because it appears as like as a lance and why it is oblong because the length of the leaf is longer than the breadth and regarding phyllotaxy the position of leaf are opposite leaves are opposite to each other two leaves they are opposite to each other hence it is called opposite and these two are opposite to each other and the above two are opposite but in different manner along with its the lower one it's it is near about 90 degree in angle hence it is opposite and decussate it is not entire little dentition is observed and hence it is called distantly crenate and about the apex of the leaf apex of the leaf is obtuse and the leaf base is narrower there is no stipule at the base of the leaf so the leaf is ex stipulate the inflorescence is verticillaster i am going to show the drawing of the verticillaster one suppose it is the stem and these are the first flowers on the both side below the first flower the second flower will appear and below the second flower the third flower will come out below the third one the fourth flower appears okay and this one is the leaf if you cut here the whole group of flower will be detached from the stem okay it is a special kind of inflorescence and it is termed as verticillaster presence of verticillaster is a special identifying feature of this family such a verticillaster inflorescence is present in the axils of the foliage leaves now the nature of the flower the flower is bisexual or hermaphrodite why it is bisexual because it is having the male and female sex organs the flower is complete why it is complete as it is having all the appendages of the flower which appendages calyx corolla endosium and gynosium and the flower is zygomorphic 
Why it is zygomorphic? Because if you cut in this direction, you will get a bilateral symmetry. But if the cutting angle is like this, you won't be able to get lateral symmetry. So it is zygomorphic in nature and it is having two lips the lower lip and the upper lip. Hence, it is called bilabiate. And the flower is hypogynous. When all the appendages of the flowers are below the ovary, then such a flower is called hypogynous flower. Here the ovary is present above the sepal, petal and stamens. So it is hypogynous in nature. These are the bracts and the length of the bract is equal to the length of the calyx and a bract is linear and ciliate. So this complete flower is bractate. So these are the sepals. The number of sepal is 5 and these sepals are united together to form a tubular structure. Hence it is gamosepalous. Now see it is curved and below it is glabrous okay and the mouth of the sepal tube is or calyx tube is oblique and it is having 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 10 nerves the presence of 8 to 10 nerve is an identifying character for this plant. You may say taxonomically for this particular genus. And the upper one is the longest and estimation is velvet. This is the calyx tube and these are the teeth. It is the tube is slightly curved having nerves 8 to 10 nerves and the tube is made up of 5 sepals and since the sepals are united to each other it is termed as gamosepalous and we have to give a bracket and below it this one is the bracket as the flower is bracted okay so it is calyx tube the calyx is persistent. This is the corolla tube. Here, this one is the lower lip and this one is the upper lip. The lower lip, it is made up of three petals. One, 
टू थ्री द मिडिल पेट्रोल इज द ब्रॉड वन एंड इट इज एक्सपांडेड द अपर लिप इट इज मेड अप ऑफ टू पेटल्स and it is erect the upper lip is erect the the estivation of petal is imbricate here the stamens are observed this one is a stamen total four stamen comprises the androecium and they are epipetalous why epipetalous because the androecium is attached to the petal and the stamens are didynamous why it is didynamous because the total number of stamen is 4 and out of these four stamens two are long and the remaining two are short corolla tube this one is upper lip and this is lower lip and these are the stamens the stamens are attached to the petal hence epipetalous regarding the structure of gynoecium the number of carpels 2 as the carpels are united they are syncarpous in nature and the ovary is superior if we cut the ovary then if it is immature there will be two chamber or two cell later on it appears four celled due to the formation of false partition and this is the axis and present tension is axial why axial because the ovules they appear from the axil of the ovary chamber okay and in each chamber there will be only one ovule and it is ovary this one is style this one is stigma here the style is gynobasic the gynobasic style is an important character of this family why it is gynobasic suppose this one is the thalamus and these are the base of the gynoecium and from here the style appear so it is gynobasic okay and the style is simple long and stigma is bifid and what is about the fruit the fruits are called nutlets this is the floral diagram this one is mother axis this one is the estivation of the sepals 1 2 3 4 5 5 five sepals since they are united to each other to form the tube so here it is locked and 
these are the imbricate petals and number is 1 2 3 4 5 these two comprises the upper lip and these three they comprises the lower lip and regarding the number of stamen the number of stamen is 1 2 3 4 the fifth one is absent and they are attached to the petal hence epipetalus regarding the position of the ovary the ovary is innermost and the uppermost here the number of carpel is 2 but it appears 4 due to the formation of false septum and it is axile in placentation these are the ovules and this one is the bract as the flower is bracted and if we cut like this bilateral symmetry is appeared but if it is cut in this direction though symmetry is not observed here it is tulip here it is three lipped hence it is called zygomorphic So, to write down the floral formula, first, since bracts are present, there will be BR. Since it is a zygomorphic flower, this one, number of sepal 5, so K5, since it is gamosepalous bracket, corolla 2 plus 3. United, androsium 4, epipetalus and gynosium 2, syncarpus and ovary is superior. Hence it will be like this, BR, zygomorphic, K, 5 united, C, 5, 2 plus 3 united, androsium 4, epipetalus, gynosium 2 united, ovary superior. Hence, G will be underlined. Hmm. So, what are the identifying characters? The identifying characters for the family are the stem is quadrangular, leaf, extipulate, simple, subsessile, then inflorescence is verticillester, then flowers are bisexual, zygomorphic, bilabiate, Hypogynous, calyx, gamosepalous, and velvet, corolla, gamopetalous, bilabiate, and imbricate. Regarding the stamens or androsia, the stamens are epipetalous and didynamous. And the most striking feature of the gynosium is the style is gynobasic. That is, the style has been arisen from the base of the gynosium and the fruits are nutlets. Hence, we may say that this plant belongs to the family Lemiaceae. At first, the name was Labiate due to the presence of two leaves or Labium. In Latin, it is Labium and in, in, in English, it is lip. So, due to the presence of two labium or leaves, the family was termed as labiate. But according to ICBM, the family name should have A C E A E. Hence, it has been changed into Lemiaceae. And regarding the genus identification, we will say that the calyx tube has. 8 to 10 nerves. This plant belongs to the genus Leucus.